What is happening everyone? Welcome back to G-Ball Vision. Today I wanted to talk about why some pouches suck and why some pouches don't suck. And basically this is going to kind of be an EDC update as far as what I've been carrying lately. Now of course the two or three knives that I carry each day, they do change unless I've designated a certain knife to review or test, then I'll keep that one in the pocket and rotate just one or two other knives. But there are some items that stay the same. Now, I've done some content on this pouch before and they come in and out of stock over on EMP EDC's website. This is a collaboration pouch with Shadowborn Hanks. And I love pouches. I think they serve a multitude of purposes. And it doesn't matter if we're talking a smaller pouch like this one or if we're talking about a little bit bigger of a pouch like you see here, this Data Crew pouch, which is a USA made pouch. It's a very nice pouch, very well done very well executed. We'll get to that one in a minute. Um, but this pouch I have found to be the best option when it comes to actually carrying the thing in your pocket or in your coat or, or on your body, right? Because sometimes now these kind for summertime, I'll throw these in like a cargo pocket, the bottom pocket, and then you got a lot of utility in the bottom of your pocket depending on what you put in here, right? Now, that's one thing I found is an issue. It is tough if I'm wearing jeans or carpenter's pants or work pants or whatever, right? It's hard to shove this in a front pocket. It's very hard to shove this in a front pocket and be comfortable. It's hard to put this in a back pocket. Uh, and, and if you do, you definitely can't be really sitting down, at least not comfortably. Now, a good role that pouches like this play are awesome for organization within a sling bag or within a backpack or something like that. The Maxpedition backpack that I keep in my truck, I have three or four Maxpedition pouches that I've designated for different things. You know, fire starting for one, tools in another, uh, little odds and ends, cords and whatnot in maybe another one. But the thing about some of them bigger pouches is they're very hard to really carry on you. And that's where something like this comes into play. I'm not saying you have to get this exact one for it to work for you. Uh, there's gonna be plenty of different variations of something like this in this size range. But this is just a touch bigger than a normal wallet. Some people, this might be the same exact size as their wallet. And which means, you know, you don't have an issue throwing this in a back pocket. Uh, my wallet's very minimal, so I have no problem putting this really in the same pocket as that, but a lot of times I'll throw this in like my back left pocket, or sometimes I'll put my wallet in my front right and throw this in my back right. It just kind of depends. Uh, I always have a knife in my front right pocket though, of course. Now, the reason I love this thing is not only do I have a zipper pouch and I'll kind of show you what we have going on in here, what I've been basically carrying with me the last couple weeks. I threw a little fidget in there. This has been the main fidget that I've been messing with, uh, you know, the last couple of weeks, couple of months anyway, the fidget boy game slider, or that's what I call it anyway. And then I have a nice lighter in here. This is the Made in Japan Douglas Field lighter. I believe this is the L. Yes, this is the Douglas Field L lighter. And this is an old school, old style trench lighter. And basically your Fluid goes in here in a nice tight O-ring. Now this is not going to be O-ring sealed up here, but it does have a nice cap. The machining is the best you can get on a trench lighter or some of the best that you can get. Uh, and then your 
uh, strikers go in this tube and get pushed up by a spring and then that gives you your spark I have carried this a lot and it has held up very well this is an aluminum body with an anodized finish and it does have a little bit of wear and tear on it uh, but for the most part this thing is solid as a rock I've talked to guys who've had these for decades uh, so it's definitely a nice quality lighter they are a little bit more expensive but uh, definitely worth it in my opinion and they're minimal too very small can fit in the palm of my hand uh, they don't take up a lot of space they're lightweight so and it's always nice to have a flame uh, nearby for sure so and then oh yeah and then I keep a little tiny in case I you know I'm feeling a little frisky I keep this little exacto knife down at the bottom in there just in case you know uh, you never know but it is spring loaded kind of like a bolt action pen would be I don't remember where I got this I'll try to remember and link it down below if I can uh, somewhere though Amazon Etsy uh, who the hell knows? Timu, maybe, even? Uh, that might be where I got this. Anyway, little exacto keychain type of deal. And it's, uh, what is that? It's not copper. I think it's brass. Yeah, it's brass. So, that stays in there. And then that's pretty much it. And there's plenty of more room in there for other stuff. But like I said, I try to keep it fairly minimal. There's times where I don't take this with me. And there's been times where that hasn't gone with me. It's just been my lighter. But we'll get to the back side. And you got two pockets here. Um, I, I, I've rotated this in and out, the Vero Fulcrum. I love this pry bar. Um, and I love it. And also, I think it's, I think it's great because of its length but that's also somewhat of a detriment to it as well the length gives you the ability to actually do some real prying it also gives you the ability to have a grip for when you are using the screwdriver which is why i really you know love this thing not only do you have the pry bar uh wide flathead quote unquote plus the bits and the driver it's just really nice you have a nice pocket clip for it and uh you know it works very good in this pouch it's a little tall though it's a little taller than i would prefer but you know I, i've seen a lot of people carry you know a pry bar just like this a tall pen you know that's way taller than this one for instance i don't know here for instance, they'll throw like a full size uh, tactile turn or refine or whatever the hell, um, but they will stick out quite a bit. And I just, I haven't really gotten used to something like that, um, but I've seen people, lots of people who do that. I'm more in the mindset of being pretty minimal and as small of a footprint as possible. Um, so I've been contemplating changing this out with the Olight one. Now that is a little smaller. The flashlight I've been running with is the copper finished, which has a nice patina on it at this point. They come, you know, bright orange uh, or bright, bright copper, basically. You can kind of see it in here. But this has taken on a patina of its own, has a nice mind of its own. But uh, the Raylight Pineapple Mini is a fantastic little light. It has a beautiful light to it as well. And the user interface is pretty easy. You just click it on and then you do like a half press. And you can cycle right through all the modes. So, And then it's got a nice pocket clip on it. But it's a minimal footprint that's still going to give me a nice amount of output. Now, I think you can program these, but when this one restarts, it's always on moonlight. And then you can just cycle through the other modes. It's got such a nice light. Uh, 
the pineapples and mini pineapples and the land as well. I love the land, but when you start getting into some of them bigger flashlights, I'd rather pocket carry them than pouch carry. Uh, because you have all this stuff in one spot, you want to try to keep stuff minimal or you're going to have a very big footprint. So we'll get these two guys out. There's a couple things I wanted to touch on in this video here. And then we'll get to our pen. Now this is the Big Idea Design titanium pen. I think it's called the Pocket Pen Pro, but it gets nice and small, but it's still usable. It's just big enough that it's usable. That's what she said as well. But typically I really like a full size pen like this tactile turn pen here or something closer to this size, especially if I'm doing a lot of writing or more writing than just a little note. But this is better than not having anything at all and it's able to keep a nice small footprint and these are nice because you can get different refills and make it come down and be pretty big this is kind of a a shower you know or a grower not a shower uh so that's cool the adjustability of it and it's pretty lightweight for a titanium pen uh and then it's got a nice pocket clip and the cool thing is uh, these three items have the ability to come out of this pouch and be clipped in the pocket. This can just be dropped in the pocket. And then you just have a nice little footprint here. Then I got some of the, the Velcro patches on the front. But one thing I have been contemplating is now this pouch stays in my sling bag. But I've been contemplating taking this Olight pry bar out, you're going to see here that this, see I keep my other tactile turn, or my other big idea design pen in here, which is in my sling bag, so it's kind of repetitive, but I don't really care. This stays with me, that stays in my sling bag, so a little different. But uh, this has just a little smaller of a footprint. So I think, I might ultimately go with this one. Well, I'll just slip it in there for the video's sake. But this has the same exact capabilities as the Vero. It is a little bit shorter, so you won't maybe get as much, uh, you know, leverage as you would with the Fulcrum. But it's going to keep my footprint quite a bit smaller. Uh, you know, in this case an inch or you know half inch or whatever closer to you know three quarters of an inch maybe or so yeah about just shy of three quarters of an inch that makes a big difference it is a little bit wider but you got the same capability and in this case i actually have a six eight and ten opposed to just an eight and a 10 or a six and an eight. I think it's a six and an eight. So I even get a little bit more capability. Plus you have the, uh, the uh, nut dri uh, driver here. And then you have the cool little face on the pocket clip. Not that that matters. Bottle opener. So this is a little bit more efficient for this pouch. The fulcrum is ultimately, I think, a little bit better of a pry bar, but I've been saying since these O pries came out, they're really a fulcrum killer in a sense. Um, you're getting the same exact thing for the most part. This is a little wider where this is a little taller, but you're getting the bit driver. You're getting a nice uh, pry bar end. Um, you have some other functionality, but these are half the price. These are like 40 to 50 where these are 100 and up. So you could get two of these for the price of one of these, you know, and you'd have one for your pocket and one for a pouch or in your vehicle or whatever. And uh, before you get one of these. So I, I really like this uh, O-Pry Toll. It's been one of my favorites. Uh, so that will ultimately end up in here and uh, 
and and I don't really need it in my uh, sling bag or in this pouch anyway because I have a mini pry bar in my truck. I have a big Tucson pry bar in my sling bag, so I really don't need it uh, in that EDC pouch. I'll probably find something else, but that's such a nicer, smaller footprint there. And then if all I throw in the front here is my lighter, you know, that is a nice small, you know, footprint. You have a lighter, you have a pry bar, you have a bit driver to maintain your tools, your knives, your multi-tools, whatever. You have a writing device and you have a candling torch flashlight also. So this is a lot of capability in one small little footprint. And to put that in perspective, here's the data crew. And this is not that filled up. Um, I have a small fidget in the front. And then in here is a bunch of other small, small gear. And the footprint is just massive. Now, there is a little bit more in here. I have this little mini Gerber dime. I have the Lander in here, the original D2. And then I have a little pen, a little tiny pry bar, and then a lighter. Uh, so another item or two, you know, and the knife is going to considerably add some space. But even without that, you just have such a bigger footprint. And if you really load something, like this is the uh, STW so, uh, Southern Threadworks pouch. It's a USA made pouch. One of the best pouches in the game uh, and best pricing as well. I've had this for a couple years now and it's held up beautifully. The zippers are rugged. You know, if you didn't want to pay for a data crew or you didn't want to spend that kind of money, but you still wanted a good pouch, this is a beautiful alternative. Mine's, you know, dirty, faded, patinaed. These come very nice charcoal gray looking type of color. And I think he's got some other ones as well. But if you really load these up, you know, to their full potential, so to speak, you know, you have every slot filled up, you know, maybe some added stuff in the middle here. I got this little flashlight in the middle, a charger for it here. But uh, they, they just make a massive footprint in your pocket. And it's not the most comfortable thing in the world to put in your jeans. So something like this is going to be a massive game changer when it comes to the pouch game and that sort of thing and i know there's people out there looking for pouches you know trying to decide what pouches to go with the only other recommendation that i could have or give and it's a similar idea as this not going to give you as much capability but it's like uh, it's something like this, kind of a, this is a hide and drink, I believe. Oh, no, it's not. It's a whatever the hell, dye dry, but it's nice. Um, I didn't pay a ton for this. Um, you can you got two slots here plus a spot for your pen. This is what I used to use. Uh, I throw it right in my back pocket like a wallet, and uh, you have your pen, uh, and then you could, you know, kind of do this up however you want. Typically, I don't put knives in here to carry on my person. Uh, this is just where I store these two slip joints at this point. Uh, I've thought about getting it back out and using it. But uh, you could put a pen, a pry bar, and a flashlight probably all together in here. Kind of similar how I have this one set up. Uh, you might have to tweak on that a little bit. You might have to go with one or the other but uh something like this that gives you a slim profile a thinner profile is going to be a lot easier to carry for many many people i think a lot of people probably get something like this or even bigger thinking yeah this is going to be awesome i can put a ton of gear in here and throw it in my pocket 
And then you get it in your pocket and you're like, damn, this is not that comfortable. Uh, you know, it's not that great. Having all this gear is nice, but uh, shoving this big ass thing in my front pocket or back pocket, you know, it's not that ideal. Uh, throwing it in your back pocket and you're going to be on your feet for six or eight hours, you know, you're not going to be sitting down, that sort of thing. Then, yeah, you know, it is a little bit better in that sense, but you're still going to have this big ass thing poking out of your back pocket or your front pocket. And that is where these things come into play, man. I'm telling you guys, getting something like one of these two, and I plan on getting something else. I have another one of these, but it doesn't get used, uh, and I'm not going to use it. It's a little different color than this one. But uh, I'm going to get something else similar to this. That way we can do some more comparing and contrasting. But if you're looking to EDC a pouch and put gear in it and be comfortable and actually want to carry it and use it, because that's always what's kept me from carrying something like these bigger ones on body, on my person, for half the year. I didn't want to do so because they're just too bulky. And then EMP put these out and I, you know, I used it a little bit, put it away or put it up, didn't use it. And then I was like, you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to give it another shot. And ever since then, uh, a couple weeks ago, I've been carrying this with me every single day. Uh, and it's nice to have all this stuff in one little spot. Keep an eye on his website uh, because he drops these all the time uh, and then they sell out instantly or very quickly, I should say. So, And they're definitely worth it, guys. You get a patch or two, you get a bead, you know, just for getting the pouch. Uh, so, And you're getting great quality. So this is my favorite EDC pouch of all time at this point as far as on-body everyday carry goes. Uh, that'll wrap it up, guys. Let me know down in the comments what you think. What do you carry? You know, do you carry a bigger data crew pouch? Do you carry a sling bag? Do you carry something like this or like this? Uh, what do you carry in it? That way, other people who watch this get an idea uh, from the people who are already in that system, so to speak. Uh, so let me know what you use, if anything, what you carry in it. Uh, do you cycle through different ones? Let us know down in the comments. I'd be interested to hear. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up button. And if you're new to the channel or you've been here before and you are not subscribed, hit that subscribe button just down below the video. I would love to have you here. Otherwise, guys, I'll throw up two new videos or three. Go watch one of them, and I'll catch you on the next one.